right. All right, what's up, everybody? I'm here with my friend Adam Leitner. Adam, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hello, um, I'm Adam Leitner, like you just said. Uh, I live down in Indy, go to IUPUI, studying mechanical engineering technology. And yeah. Yeah, he's a, he's a smart man. So me and Adam met, what was it, probably five years ago now? Um, we, were, we worked at Kroger together yeah. when we were 16. Um, we got some, we got a funny story kind of together. Um, after like four years, we didn't really talk. Um, and then one day I either hit him up or you hit me up and you were like, let's go to Lala. Something yeah. like that. Um, yeah. You went to Bonnaroo and I was like, this man might want to go to Lala with me. Let's see. Yeah. So we ended up just doing a full send. Um, we didn't really plan anything. We just kind of went and it was actually funny cause, uh, we got to the hotel um, after like a two, two and a half hour drive, whatever it is to Chicago. And we actually got locked out uh, or not locked out. They wouldn't admit us because um, we weren't 21 yet, which was uh, quite a bit of fun. Um, how did you end up convincing her to do that? I completely forget. Um, basically, like at, we like sat in like the car and we were like trying to figure it out. And I called my dad and I was like, dad, like, we just drove all this way and we don't even have a place to stay anymore and so i think he called the hotel and they agreed that we just had to put a deposit down like a 200 dollars deposit that we would get back but like we had to put a deposit down just in case because they didn't want to be like liable for that yeah yeah it was it was definitely like a cool story to tell now, but it sucked at the time. Every time I go to Chicago, there's always hotel problems. I went up there for an Illenium concert um, and we actually booked the wrong weekend at the hotel. So then we were stuck there for like a couple hours trying to get something figured out. Um, it was pretty crazy. So then yeah, it, it was like 1030 at night too. Like yeah, it was getting late. <laughs> it was. Yeah. Cause we left at what, I think we left at like five or six our time and they're an hour behind of us. So it was it was definitely a crappy situation, but we made the best of it. Found it uh, found it some beverages and whatnot. Um, so anyway, then next day we went to Alala. What do you think of Alala first off, like overall experience wise? Um, that was my first festival, which like, I think it was a great one to start out, out with. And I, don't know, I thought it was really fun, you know, but Lala is kind of a place like where high schoolers are just like, they think they run everything and I was just like yeah, I don't know about all that but it was it was a good like one to start out with and like obviously it's huge so there are always like huge acts that are great yeah yeah definitely who was uh who was would you say was your favorite uh performance there I mean I think we both know Flume you weren't the biggest no fan way. of it no way you can't tell me that Flume was better than well i guess you didn't go to Lil wayne you went to boombox cartel didn't you yeah but i i, I saw it like 20 minutes of Lil wayne man flu i just for uh last night closing set i just don't think it was the mood you know i think um i think if you played a little earlier I thought it, was. it was just it was kind of it was not gonna lie it was kind of boring like it was nah. The music just wasn't wasn't the vibe I was looking for there, you know. Um, nah. Who was your biggest surprise that really surprised you that blew you out of the water? I might have to go with Flume again, honestly, just because. So, the reason I liked it is because it was a very like artistic, like visual set, you know. Like, there were times like where I just forgot I was even like listening to music because it because there was like so much stuff on stage going on and like before i saw that set like i liked flume but he wasn't like anything like crazy to me like you know i was definitely a fan but you know but i don't know the way that he like did everything artistically and like what i don't know like he played half the set just like sitting on his knees like on the on the ground yeah so like i don't know so that kind of surprised me that it was like that much yeah like, it was a very artistic, artistic uh set i would say I, th I thought it was more artistic than it was musical honestly yeah but i thought that was cool yeah yeah it was it was i'm happy i saw flume um but it just wasn't one of my my favorite sets you know i just don't i don't think it was the right vibe for that time like i could see if like 
you know, maybe a, a nice starting the weekend, um, right at like sundown type of deal, but like closing out the festival, it's just, I can see where you're coming from. Yeah. And then what day, day two was it? Um, when, uh, you want to tell them about the, the Tito's lounge and the picnic table? How much can I say? I, yeah, I think you can say it all. I can say it all? I think you can say it all. I think uh, we're grown now. We're, uh, yeah. We don't have to keep it a secret. <laughs> it's been a little bit. Um, basically, we were sitting at these picnic tables, and I had a beer. You know, sure, not 21 yet. Used fake. Uh, I am 21 now. Um, but used my fake, got a beer. I was sitting on that. And Mike was, uh, we, we snuck in these flasks of vodka <laughs> and he was like drinking that a little bit. And, um, basically these people came up to us and they were like, Hey, like, what do you guys, what's in that flask? And I was like, Ooh, uh. and we told them, we were just like, yes, vodka. And they're like, all right, if you promise not to drink that, for the rest of the weekend or the rest of the day or whatever they're like we'll give you these tito lounge wristbands which tito's lounge that's an invite only thing and you need to be invited by tito's and it turned out like these people all like worked for tito's but yeah oh yeah i mean we didn't we i don't know if we drank that sedka no i don't I, we didn't need to i mean it was it was yeah. free, free alcohol free. all weekend yeah, and really, technically, the wristband was only that one day, but if you flipped it inside out, like, it was the same as every other day, so we just kept reusing it. And, yeah, free food, free drinks. There were, like, hammocks. There's, like, a hair and nail salon in there. That was that was very, very weird. I was like, who comes to a Tito's Lounge to get your hair and nails done? But I guess, I guess it would be pretty festive. Yeah, yeah, definitely air-conditioned bathrooms which were nice oh my goodness dude it was so hot so hot and yeah. dusty. i was i was blowing black stuff out of my nose for like three days especially over at uh the perry stage where it's all that mulch and oh uh, yeah where you lost your cell phone <sighs> that was that was a close one i think uh probably the funniest thing was chain smokers night two i think and i dropped my sunglasses and I told you I dropped them, and I was like, it's whatever. You know, I mean, they're Ray-Bans. They were, like, $180. Yeah. Um, and I was just like, it's whatever. And Adam looks at me, and he's like, no, we're going to find them. And he pulls out his flashlight, and he starts tapping everybody. Like, hey, hey, you see these sunglasses? You see these sunglasses? That was that was definitely hilarious. Um, Yo, yeah, I was not about that. to let that slide. <laughs> yeah. You were like, I, you I was like, no, nah, no, nah, those are expensive. Like, we're going to find those. Which was, it was partly my fault for wearing Ray-Bans to uh, Lollapalooza. That probably wasn't. Yeah, I, I wore my cheap pair of sunglasses. But you, you know the drip doesn't stop just because you're at Lollapalooza. You got you to gotta be flexing on it. Yeah, I don't know about all that. <laughs> Maybe with your shirt because you know you're not going to lose that, but sunglasses. That's very true. And then, uh, well, I don't think we'll say his name, but then we, we, lost, uh, we lost your friend there for – for a good four or five hours that was uh eventful. yeah yeah when when we got the tito's wristbands they weren't anywhere to be found no and like we met up with them later and we we're just like hey we got these and they're like what how and then yeah we lost one person for a while yeah he <laughs> He somehow snuck out of the medical tent and made it safely as we were driving up the exit to the uh, parking garage that we stayed in. Which was, We know. were about to leave this man in downtown Chicago, and our hotel was like 45 minutes away. To be fair, we waited quite, quite a long time. I mean, we waited around. Oh, yeah. We were calling. We called him at least 16 times. Um, yeah, it man. Was, it was at that point where I think we were all thinking he's probably in jail somewhere, um, staying the night for public intox. Um, yeah, yeah. But luckily, somehow we got reception down in uh, the bottom of that parking garage, and those 
what was it, three or four girls brought him to us because he. Yeah, I don't even know how like we ended up finding him. Like, that's crazy. Yeah, it's it was is honestly like a one in a million chance of finding somebody else. There's first off, there's no cell service anywhere at Lollapalooza above ground, below yeah. ground. There's nothing because there's so many people in one area, and then it's it's nighttime at Chicago. Um, people, everybody's leaving, so there's hundreds and thousands of people walking out of the gates, and you're looking for one dude. It's yeah impossible, but everybody made it safe. Um, we got back to the hotel safe. The car died. Oh my god, that was the last day. That was no, that was the second to last day. I think that was after they'd left because um, they only stayed with us for like a day or two. Yeah, god, that was right. terrible. I was like, as soon as I turned that key over and it said tick tick tick, I said, oh no, we were yeah. uh, we were in line to leave, going almost going up a hill. So it was like a one. You'd only fit one car, like in the exit garage, um, and they had to shut off our vehicles because of carbon monoxide. Because there's so many cars going at one time, they couldn't keep up. We were just jamming out, listening to some radio, and then um, we went to go move, and my car died. And you can't get a car, like, in front of you because it's We were on that hill, yeah. There was a big line. So I ended up – as soon as I clicked it, somebody had a pair of jumper, jumper cables, that little box, and that wouldn't jump it. And eventually we pushed the car over enough to where we could get jumped, which sucked. Dude, that was yeah. – I thought I thought we were stuck there for the night. I was like so. I honestly kind of forgot about that. Yeah, dude, there's there's a lot of memories there, um, especially with the Tito's Lounge thing and then losing friends and. Definitely. So what what else? What other concerts have you been to so far? Like since then, um, are you? <sighs> quite a few. Uh, a lot, yeah. I'm a bit. I'm a big concert goer. Um, like around this time last year, I think from like the middle of February to the middle of March, I went to like eight shows. Yeah, that's the joy of living in Indy. They have a, they got quite a few down there. Um, Definitely. Fort Wayne gets nobody. Uh, we, I don't think, I think we had Space Cheese us here like three years ago. The Subtronics played uh, at the end of 2019. Like, in, in, like, late December, Subtronics was at, like, the Clyde or something like that. I went to that one. Oh, did you? Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't even realize he came to us for it. That's, that's a little bit too uh, too hardcore for me, you know. That's Yeah. See, so, yeah, I think those, like, I wasn't super into it, but then once I started going to shows like that, that's when I, like, got into the harder stuff. Yeah, I was actually supposed to go see Excision um, until Rona hit. I was supposed to go see him at Navy Pier in Chicago, which really sucked. Rona's thrown me off uh, my whole music schedule. There for a while, I was on a good pace of hitting like once or once or twice a month going to a concert, and then Rona happened. And have yeah, you gone? Have you gone to any of those uh, socially distanced, like the ones at the drive-in theaters? Yeah, I went to a drive-in for Subtronics and like a couple other people. Uh, in columbus back in september october but that was the last show i went to how were they i mean were they worth the money you think or was it kind of not the same vibe um it was it was fun like it was nice to just like get back into like shows but there there were pros and cons um cons i would say like you were further away because like you know you park your car and all the cars are like distanced you know so you're like kind of far back and it wasn't as loud as it could have been but uh it was also super nice because like you could bring your in your own alcohol and everything like and you had room to yourself but like you didn't have to like buy alcohol there or anything like you just we just brought it like a case of beer or something you know and just like had it in our car and whenever we wanted it like it, everything was right there whether we needed like water alcohol food we just had it had everything like accessible the whole time yeah because when you go to a concert at a venue i mean it's very easy to run up a hundred bucks pretty quick i mean yeah especially like between the shows and stuff you go get a beer or two and then you know that's 20 30 bucks right there because yeah. they got you and it sucks i think uh, when i went up to Alenium, Millennium in Chicago. I think we were only there because it was Millennium, William Black, a couple other um, lower name DJs. Mm-hmm. I think 
just with that, I think I was at like 120 bucks. Um, and not even yeah. drink that heavy. It's, it sucks. It's robbery, honestly. <laughs> yeah. But for some reason we still do it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, and that's, that's why I kind of got more into festivals also because I mean, for mm -hmm. the money, like e Forest, um, all those big names, if you were to buy those concert tickets individually, you'd be at probably close to five, $6,000. Oh yeah. Um, and you, you get honestly better shows. Like, uh, when I saw Elenium, I saw him at Bonnaroo and at, uh, um, at his own concert and his set at Bonnaroo was a lot better because it's less scripted. They can do more of, they're not on the tour for a specific album, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I have one more uh, payment left for, uh, EDC Las Vegas. Oh, you're going? Yeah, and then, yeah, super excited. And then I paid, uh, like, I finally got through the waiting list and paid for my ticket for Electric Forest in, like, January. Are they 100% going to happen, or is it still, when's EDC? Uh, I don't know. Las Vegas? EDC should, like, it's scheduled for April, May. I think like May, May something, but I, I don't know if it'll happen, but I don't know yeah, if not, I'm sure like they'll like refund the tickets or just like have them transfer over till next year or something. Yeah. If they reschedule it or something. Yeah. Cause that's, that's coming up pretty quick. And I mean, I know some States are opening up Las Vegas will probably get there pretty quick just cause that's where all their revenue comes from. So hopefully it happens. Yeah. That's a huge event with a lot of people. Huge event. It's like one of the biggest festivals in America. Who are you most excited to see there? Who's all who's on your top five that's playing there? Uh, I don't even know the lineup anymore. Like they they came out with the lineup, but it it very well could change, you know. Yeah. So honestly I could not tell you. When did you buy your ticket for that? Uh I want to say like March of last year. No. Yeah, maybe around like March. Like, and I just did like payments. May All right, maybe later than March. But I don't know, like last year. And then I just did like $60 payments each month. Gotcha. But only one more left. So that's hype. Do they have, is it all just, you have to stay in a hotel there? Do they have like a camping section at all or anything? Uh, I'm pretty sure they have camping, but we're just going to stay in a hotel. Okay. Um, I mean, I haven't gotten the hotel ticket or hotel or plane tickets or anything. Like Honestly. none of us, none of us have except one person and he did it like right when he got the ticket. But like, we don't even know if it's going to happen. So like, we don't want to waste our money right now. When I also feel like that's how guys plan trips a lot of the times is that you're just kind of like, yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll just go with it. Yeah. And the group that I go with are so bad at that. Like when we first bought our tickets, I was like, all right, like we need to figure this out. Like, come on, let's do this. And everyone was like, eh, I mean, it'll work itself out. And I'm like, yo, this isn't just like we're driving a couple hours. Like this is Las Vegas. Across the country. Yeah, and they're just so nonchalant about it. And I'm like, yo. Oh. Give you a little anxiety. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I still, like, I don't know what we're going to do. Yeah, yeah. But that's also what makes it fun is kind of just a spontaneous, the unknown about it. You know, like. I guess. When I went to Bonnaroo, there was a lot of unknowns. Um, yeah, definitely. Like 26 strangers and nobody I knew was there, which but that also made it a lot more fun. So I think that yeah. also helps add to it a bit so then right now who's your who's your top five favorite artists if you had to pick in a in a line uh like not just edm but jeremy zucker top artist for sure that love jeremy zucker a funny moment at lala yeah yeah he's so fire um jeremy zucker flume Mac Miller, Beep the Mac, Tapestry. Um, I like Loose Child. And let me think. Yeah, I don't know. There's there's a fifth one, but I 
I can't even decide. There's too many artists out there. There are a lot. Now, um, when you got into EDM, did you get into it before or after you saw it in concert? Um, I was definitely, like, pretty into it. Uh, I, I started to get into it a little bit, like, 2016-ish. And then started to get, mo- like, really into it the summer of, like, 2019. And then we went to Lala, which made me like it even more. And then I started going to individual shows, which that's, like, when I, like, dove, like, head first and, like, was completely in it. Now I'm in, like, group chats of, like, people all over the country, like, who yeah. like EDM. It's pretty awesome. And I think that's what I try and tell my friends because they hate on me for listening to EDM. I'm like, just go to a concert. Like, I didn't like it either, but once you go to a concert, there's no other type of concert that really matches the energy even closer. Exactly. No, it's so fun. And, like, rappers, I'm I'm probably going to get some hate, but rappers suck in concert. I mean, they're – Lil Wayne was the only one. Like, if you go to somebody who's established, like a Drake, a Lil Wayne, a Future, it's probably going to be good. But if you go to, like, one of the people that's still up and coming or just became big, they're yeah. normally not that great. I mean, they can be all right, but it's not it, really. Kind of like Lil Baby. Oh, my God. Don't get me started. That was – I felt robbed for even watching that for five minutes. Like – I like Lil Baby for sure. I came as an artist. Definitely. Yes. But like, nah, he was like three seconds behind his track playing in the background. He didn't really sound like himself. Like, obviously, I, you don't really expect it. Just be, you don't expect them to sound like themselves because they don't have all that auto tune or everything. But like, it was like not good. And people were just like aggressive. Oh, my God. Like, everyone in the crowd was just super aggressive and, like, weird. Well, that one girl said that her friend got, like, choke slammed or something like that because they were sitting up on the rail and yeah. somebody else wanted to come in and grab her by her neck and threw her. It's just, like... Oh. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure someone, like, fought a security guard there. Like, I don't know. You don't really get that at EDM concerts. No, everybody's like, oh, you want to go to the front? Okay, go ahead. Whatever. Good yeah. Luck. See ya. Yeah. Everyone's super nice. That's the nice part is uh, it just feels feels way more relaxed. You don't have to be on edge about anything because, you know, nobody's going to come up to you and just randomly get mad if you actually bump into them or something. Yeah. I think it's definitely a nice, nice feature of it. Definitely. Again, if uh, anybody out there is looking to really like EDM, I just suggest going to a show. Um, listening to it, it doesn't – Listening to it in your car or chilling, it's not the same effect, especially once you're first getting into it as going to a show. Uh, there's a Definitely. lot more energy. Yeah. I, I suggest everyone at least tries one show of EDM because I know a lot of people that don't even like it, even after they go to a concert, they don't really like EDM that much, but they love going to the shows. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a different experience. Um, yeah. Now, if you were if you were telling somebody who's just now getting into it for the first time, who would you suggest to check out first? Um, honestly, I know like a few people who have like that are that aren't super into EDM, but their first show was Subtronics, and they like loved it just because he just puts on a great show. Like, sure, it's like harder, but he puts on an amazing show and like, it's just like a super fun time. So I would say Subtronics is a good one to go to. It's a little, it might be a little overwhelming, but it's super fun. Um, but if you want to go to something like not as much, I would say probably like Elenium or Loose Child or something like that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'd have to say Elenium is definitely by far my favorite artist. I mean, I think I've seen him three or four times now. Um, mm-hmm. he just puts on a good show it's nice relax i mean it's still hype but it's not like subtronics I yeah think. yeah how was uh subtronics uh visuals i bet those were pretty insane yeah he his visuals are nuts and i don't know if you've ever like caught any like virtual fests yeah i've, I've tuned into a couple of them so yeah that was like a huge thing they don't have them as much anymore but at the beginning of quarantine like they're having them like every weekend but Subtronics virtual sets were so crazy. 
his visuals were nuts. Yeah, yeah. I tried synth. Have you gone to quite a few of them, or do you watch them all the way, or you just tune in for like ten minutes and then dip out? Uh, usually, like, I'll like just play them in the background, like, or I'll like look at the schedule and like kind of like how you would like a festival. You you like I look at the schedule and I'm like, all right, I need to catch this artist, this artist, this artist, and this one. And then like in between, like I might like do something else, but like I try to like just leave it in the background, you know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, those those virtual ones, I don't. I just I probably should have done what you did, was just throw it on the background and do like schoolwork or something. But I actually tried to like physically sit there and watch them all the way through, and it just kind of sizzled it out. I couldn't do it. Yeah, definitely. Like I, I would sit down and watch like the artists that I really wanted to watch. Yeah. But I didn't like try to sit there through a bunch of random artists. Yeah, definitely. That that probably would have made it a little bit better. Because I think um, when we went to Lala, I think we did the math. What did we see? Like 33 people? 30? Around there, yeah. Yeah. And what we averaged out to 10, like a dollar or 10 bucks, uh, 10 bucks a show. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, that sounds about right. Because it was like 300 for it. Yeah, but not bad at all. Like, even to see, like, one person there, like, a headliner there. Yeah, like, you go and try to buy bloom tickets. I mean, that's expensive. Yeah, or Ariana Grande. We didn't see her because she was playing the same time as Flume, but Ariana Grande tickets, like, they, those have to be nuts. Oh, 100%, because everybody likes a little Ari. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like it. She, she's talented. <laughs> she's attractive (laughs) Um, uh, all right man well i appreciate you uh coming on here talking a little bit Uh, we'll definitely do this again um for everybody watching i don't really have a specific thing i'm gonna call this i'm gonna have a couple other people on to talk about um different adventures i've been on and things i've done with them um so just stay tuned Um, there's no there's no real schedule for these are going to come out when they come out Adam, thank you for coming. Uh, any thank you for having any me. words? Uh, try out an EDM show. All right. I appreciate it, man. Thanks. All right. Thank you.